Greetings, junior scientists, scientists, and citizens, great big, weird, wild, wonderful world in which we live. As always, I'm your humble science communicator, the Great Orbax, coming to you here from the Department of Physics at the University of Guelph, and I'd like to welcome you to our July 2022 Stargazing Guide. Let's walk through a typical summertime stargaze. It's midnight, you've got your blanket and some snacks, your notebook or device, and you take some time to look up. The Summer Triangle should quickly become your new favorite summer asterism. One spot and you'll be able to watch it all summer long as it ascends in the eastern sky. It's almost like a celestial calendar, rising higher and higher throughout the summer until early autumn when it's directly overhead. Now remember that asterisms aren't the same thing as constellations. Orion's belt is an asterism. Orion the Hunter is a constellation. An asterism is a quickly recognizable pattern of stars. And the Summer Triangle is comprised of three stars, which are each part of their own constellations. First look east and you'll spot Vega, the brightest star in the Summer Triangle. A twinkling blue-white star in the constellation Lyra the Lyre. Down and right you'll spot the second brightest star in the triangle, Altair. Altair is the brightest star in the constellation Aquila, the Eagle. Finally, head left and up a little and you'll find Deneb, which happens to be the brightest star in another constellation, Cygnus the Swan. <laughs> These three stars and their constellations should be visible throughout the summer, and the Summer Triangle itself should be visible even in the most light-polluted cities. Now, if you manage to make it to a patch of dark sky, you can actually use the Summer Triangle to your advantage. On the right-hand side of the Summer Triangle, between Vega and Altair, you'll see a densely populated region of sky with a stream of stars that actually cut across Deneb in a giant arc. This is the sidelong view of the Milky Way, the galaxy within which our solar system resides. Remember to check in on the Summer Triangle throughout the summer, junior scientists, and make note as it rises in the sky in the coming months. The full moon this month is on the 13th, and it's another super moon. Last month, we talked about what a super moon is. And this month, we get to experience the second of three super moons this year. Settlers commonly refer to the July full moon as the buck moon, or the thunder moon and we see it shining in the sky near the stars of Sagittarius. The Anishinaabe of the Great Lakes region called the July Full Moon the Halfway Summer Moon. The Cree of Central Canada called the July Full Moon the Feather Molting Moon, a reference to when the wild waterfowl replaced their old feathers with new ones. The Mi'kmaq of the East Coast also marked the July Moon with this behavior and refer to it as Beskewa Goose, the Bird Shedding Feathers Moon. The Cherokee Nation refer to it as a Corn and Tassel Moon, while the Mohawks call it the Fruits Are Ripened Moon. After last month's early morning planetary alignment, our celestial comrades go their own ways. Mars and Venus will remain morning plants, while Jupiter and Saturn will become evening plants. It's July! So that means meteors! The new moon takes place on July 28th, meaning that light from the moon will be minimal, so we should be able to get a phenomenal view of the Delta Aquarius meteor shower. On July 28th and 29th after midnight, if you're lucky, you should be able to see up to 20 meteors an hour emanating from the constellation Aquarius in the southeast. When the Earth travels through the tail of a comet, debris from that comet gets burned up in our atmosphere. That's what we know as a meteor, or a shooting star. Although this meteor shower radiates from Aquarius, shooting stars should actually be visible anywhere in the sky. I wish you luck, junior scientists. Oftentimes July is hot and dry, but the lack of cloud cover can result in some incredible stargazing. Now is your chance, junior scientists, to get out there and observe the beautiful cosmos that we're lucky enough to call our home. Can you believe it? All these planets and stars, meteors and moons, all circling and spiraling millions of miles away, and yet somehow, some way, we're lucky enough to get to watch it all happen. It's all there, waiting for you to discover. And all you have to do is take some time to look up. See you next month, and don't forget to have a science-tastic day. Special thanks to Royal Sea Science's own planetary geochemist, Dr. Glynis Perret, for her help preparing our stargazing guide. We'd also like to thank the Skyview app and the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada.